Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Got a special guest in the building, my buddy Keenan Womack of Orange Bloods. Covers the Texas men's basketball team. So excited. This is long overdue to have Keenan on the channel, but we're going to talk some hoops today. Chris Beard going into year two, getting, you know, getting what he needs out of the portal, getting some McDonald All-American talent in here. So our first conversation, because we're going to have two different basketball conversations, this first video is just going to be focused around the tens, Texas men's basketball team. Keenan, welcome to the channel, brother. How you doing? Dude, I'm so glad to be on. I appreciate it. I mean, I've been watching your stuff for since before I was even involved in sports media, so it's very cool to uh, get to be on your show, so I appreciate that. Man, and just so much has is, is, is happened, um, you know, over the last, oof, you know, since the since the tournament i would say has ended and we thought you know the uncertainty and up and down with this roster um so to, for things to be the way they are here late june um very very encouraging and um we're just gonna have a conversation about it right and, and kind of dive in and, and, and see where things stand uh before we do that i want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor busr busr.com slash fanatic the official sports book the official betting partner of fanatic perspective amazing customer service a lot of you guys right now betting on baseball uh horse racing all all sorts of things that are going on seasonally right now tour de france so no better place to to, to put your bets in and have a reliable betting partner than bsr.com slash fanatic take advantage of that sports 100 fp promo code keenan my first question yes, to you sir is you know, how do you, how big picture, and you've written about this a lot on Orange Bloods and, and did a phenomenal job covering the team last season. When you step back and you see kind of how the entire college basketball landscape ended, you know, Kansas wins the national championship against North Carolina, and it seemed to be a blue blood fest there. How did you feel about how things ended in year one for Chris Beard? It's a good question. I think, you know, compared to expectations that there were at the very beginning of the season, I mean, top five in a lot of places, top two in a couple places, naturally people are going to be disappointed when the team doesn't live up to that. Um, they got swept by Tech. They got swept by Baylor. They split with Kansas. So that's one in five against the top few teams in the conference. So that's frustrating, of course. But I think that just getting the monkey off your back of winning that first round game was really important. I think that if Beard had lost that game, it would have been a much different reaction by the players after the season. I think more may have left. Um, you know, I mean, they returned Carr and Allen and Bishop and Cunningham and uh, a couple others, uh, I think. Um, but, like, they got their big hitters back from last year. I mean, Trey transferred to West Virginia. Ramey, Arizona, and Jones is going the pro route. So I think all things considered, it was a success, but maybe not as successful as the fan base was expecting or wanting. I think that's due in part to the preseason ranking, the manner in which Chris Beard came from Texas Tech. And, you know, he, he made it very clear at the beginning of the season, this isn't you know, oh, um, you know, we're in win now mode year one. And there was, I think, some really, high, you know, really big moments beating Kansas at home and um, so much of the success they had, you know, up and down in the Big 12, which in my opinion is the best basketball conference in the country, uh, top to bottom. And easily just the level. Yeah, just the level of competitiveness. It's crazy how deep the Big 12 is. But getting that, that tournament win was big for the fan base. And I think while losing to Purdue sucked, it's like, all right, well, you know, they had a lottery pick over there, probably a better team if we were just head-to-head. -head. It is what it is. But at least getting over that hump and not having, you know, another Abilene Christian-type situation <laughs> or, or, or anything, I think is, is, is a step forward for us. But now going into year two, Keenan, we're going into the Moody Center. Uh, and in a lot of my football videos, I've talked a lot about positive pressure. 
within Texas athletics. And, you know, I think there's positive pressure, you know, seeing the success women's basketball's had under Vic Schaefer. You have a new arena, back-to-back Directors' Cup champions under Chris Del Conte. Talk to me just in terms of what do you think are reasonable expectations with this group as we, you know, look at year two under Chris Beard? Yeah, I think they need to make the Sweet 16 this year, given the roster that they have. They could go further. I think that this roster is, it's A, much more athletic than last year's roster. As I was saying to you before we started, you know, didn't really have players that could beat other players off the dribble. So that makes the motion offense really hard when you're just dribbling around and getting running into traps, you know, trying to throw skip passes that get picked off. Like it was really hard to watch that offense some last year. And I, I think it's a lot more fun offense. With Nit, um, with Ter- Arterio Morris, Dylan Mitchell, and Tyrese Hunter all in, in the building now, I think you're going to end up with a much more effective offense. Um, they'll have to push the pace some, I think. I think Beard doesn't like to do that, but I think with this lineup, he's going to do that to an extent. Um, they're not going to be, you know, the fastest team in the nation or anything, but I don't think they'll be the eighth slowest team in the nation, which they were last year which is not you know, necessarily a bad thing. It's just the way they play. They play a hardcore defense. And I think, yeah, you need to make the Sweet 16. You need to split with those rivals, I think. I, I'm kind of of the belief that college basketball is split into two seasons. There's the regular season and there's the postseason. And I think you need success in both to recruit well. So I think that they need to split with Tech, split with Kansas, split with Baylor, or, or win two of those games. I don't know, because looking at those rosters, those teams. So yep. the Big 12 is the best conference in college basketball, as you said. And I think it's not really that close. So, you know, finishing third or fourth in conference, I think they need to finish. I think they need to finish top three and make a sweet 16. That would be my expectation. I mean, you look at Baylor adding one of the best high school players in the country themselves. And games loaded. Kansas is going to be very good. Tech is not going away. Um, this this is an unbelievable conference, like you're saying. But I think the Sweet 16. I think that's a very fair expectation. And I think that also takes into account kind of the flukiness of March, because at some point right. there has to be luck or, or, or certain things factored in. There were some good teams that unfortunate things happen this and it happens every 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 cycle kentucky i do think right right st peter's comes out of nowhere and you know st peter's does what it does just that kentucky was that first team that saw st peter's and Mm -hmm. i I, keenan i do think as as fans we struggle with the pace that's that's tough now they're playing defense at a very very high level and you know, I understand in the motion offense of, 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 of patience and, and guys you're looking for to cut. And I think Dylan Mitchell, you know, some of the guys you were, we were talking about off camera are better fits and, and maybe can, can mm-hmm. provide, you know, get us out of some of those stalls that we have. But there's just so, so many times last year where we would have a long rebound or an opportunity where it felt like we could really run and, and maximize, you know, some 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 creativity that some of our guys we know they had and we we're just reluctant to do so i i would be frustrated to see that with a guy like Atario more with guys like tyrese hunter coming in I, I i think that has to be there has to be more of a balance there for for chris to to really capitalize on what those guys bring to the table yeah i agree i think that you know th- again they were 350 350th in pace last year, I think. The only, there were like five or six teams below them or something. And it's not sexy basketball, really, but it can be winning basketball. But I don't think that you're married to one or the other. I think that those are not necessarily mutually exclusive principles. And you can play that smash mouth defense and also be explosive on offense. And they have, have the pieces to be explosive on offense now. I, I mean, I've been saying it over and over. Tyrese Hunter is a really good – that guy is awesome. That's a huge pickup. That's as big as any pickup uh, recruiting to me because he showed what he can do already. Tyrese Hunter did. 
Uh, he did it against LSU in the NCAA tournament. He looked great. I mean, given he was hitting a lot of threes then, and that's not really his game, he's much more a guy who gets to the rack quickly and can finish through contact. And he's just super quick with the ball. He's a great passer, averaged five assists last year per game. So I think he's going to be a complete game changer, allow Marcus Carr to play off ball more. And same with uh, Arterio Morris and just Serge Abari Rice, the other transfer. He's going to get some minutes as, at guard as well. Um, so I think the fact that they have like a true point guard now, instead of trying to make a shooting guard play point guard, it's going to pay huge dividends. That is a huge, huge thing you just emphasize of being able to get by your man with relatively relatively ease off the dribble and something we struggled with. Um, I love Marcus Carr, love, you know, AJ1 and which all those brothers, Courtney Ramey, um, but they weren't guys that were just going to blow by their defender. And especially mm-hmm. in any type of isolation situation, Marcus Carr has a lot in his bag, love his midi game, but it's, it, you know, he's not, he's never been that type of dude that's just going to explosively blow by guys and get to the cup and, and finish strong at the rim. So getting those type of guys there, I think that also helps with the stalls that we've seen offensively. I think my two biggest questions I have for you are where are my shooters in terms of off the catch? And are you concerned at all about lack of size with this team? Those were the two points I was going to bring up to you. So, (laughs) yeah, I'm concerned. I'm a little concerned about their lack of size. You know, as I think that they went after, I mean, the biggest loss for Texas this year was losing Fardal's IMAC to Texas Tech. That was the guy that they wanted, that Utah Valley center who can shoot threes, averaged 19 19 and 13 last year. I mean, given it was a small conference, but like, if you put up numbers like that in any conference, you're doing something right. Plus he's seven foot or seven foot one. So that was kind of the big L of the off season. Considering how many wins there were, that one for Chris Beard, I'm sure. So yeah, I'm I'm a bit concerned about their lack of height for sure. I'm I don't know whether I'm more concerned about that or more concerned about their lack of um, catch and shoot guys. I think Arterio Morris can shoot off the dribble some. But they don't have a sniper. They don't have a Sean McNeil or, you know, an Ochai Abaji or, a, you know, an A.J. Griffin or, or whoever. They don't have a guy that's going to shoot 42% from three this year. And so not all the problems have been fixed, although two, I think athleticism was the number one problem, and that's been addressed. And uh, point guard play, that's another problem that I think has been addressed. But, you know, I think that lacking size is not – it is going to be possibly an issue for them this year. I mean, their two tallest guys are Desu and Dylan Mitchell, who are both 6'9", which is tall, obviously. But when you play a guy that's 7'1", foot, foot I don't know who you're going to put on him. And that was something that concerned me going into last season. You know how much I love my boy Christian Bishop. I'm glad he's back. You know how much I love yeah. Timmy Allen. I'm glad they're back. Um, veteran guys, Christian Bishop. Yeoman's effort on some of the bigger guys in the conference, but we know, and, and this is something I had, a, I, I looked at, I'm like, man, how do I guard a David McCormick? Um, or even, you know, Eddie Lampkin at TCU and, and these matchups yeah. that we'll have. Um, it's not consistent every single, like when we play Baylor, like Baylor's not really, you know, Flo Thamba's not really, gonna beat me off the post and turn around and shoot a jump hook over his left shoulder right like Mm -hmm. i'm okay there in certain matchups but in other matchups it it is it's a glaring hole um and so while i love the depth that i have and the guys i got back um that's something to see honestly i think i'm more concerned about the shooting I think, and I think yeah. I'm more concerned about the shooting because of floor spacing. I think that could lead to another problem. What, what say you there? Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, yeah, the lack of shooting obviously makes me nervous as a guy covering the team who will incur the wrath of fans after a bad loss. So that's <laughs> part of the job. But yeah, I mean. They went after some shooters. They just they just couldn't get any of them. I mean, they went after Sean McNeil, who I believe went to Ohio State. 
Um, they, you know, they were looking for guys. They just, they just didn't really land who they thought they were going to land or didn't land who they thought they needed. And I agree with you on the floor spacing because, you know, they're not playing five out, you know what I mean? They're playing motion with like usually one guy in the post or two sometimes. So it's, it's going to be problematic unless somebody steps up and starts shooting really well. But I don't, I don't really see who that would be. I mean, Tyrese Hunter shot 27% from three last year. I mean, he had some awesome games from three, but he's not like a guy who's going to smoke you from the three point line every night. Um, And that's where, you know, I I wish they had the old Jace Febris kind of, because that would be a guy who could knock down shots for you. could come in off the bench, just be like kind of a, a fire starter as a shooter. But no, I agree with you that the lack of shooting is definitely concerning and it's definitely their biggest hindrance other than defensively playing against seven foot guys. I think my best shooter off the catch is Marcus Carr. If I had to think about it. Probably. Of, of who I would trust. And I think him playing off the ball, not having to have all of the playmaking duties on his shoulder, so to speak. I also may at certain times run some of my stuff through Timmy Allen anyway out of the mid post. I really, really need Marcus Carr to be to be that guy off to to give me that spacing, I feel like. Because to your point, all these other guys are guys that can make threes, but off the dribble or if they're more in an isolation type deal. It's not really you know, Timmy Allen's more of a mid-range guy if he is getting it off the catch. So those are things I'm, I'm very curious to see how Chris Beard uh, navigates that. But when I have people coming in, my last question to you, or second to last question, is about Mitchell, who is, mm-hmm. you know, probably our most NBA-lauded recruit and in-person on the team. Uh, right now, we're seeing him in the mid mid lottery, like five set, you know, five to ten range. I'd say. Um, yeah. Just talk about Dylan Mitchell, what he brings to the table. Um, the last time we had a wing like that was Greg Brown, and um, kind of talk to me about why you think, you know, you think Dylan Mitchell's good, better, not overrated, rated properly, underrated. What, what, are you, what what's your take there? So if you were to ask me, you know, a year ago where I would rank Dylan Mitchell, it would be a lot different than where I rank him today. Because he was, when he committed to Texas, I helped I helped figure out that recruitment um, with some of the Rivals guys. And he was a four-star at the time. He's top 30. He's from number 28 on Rivals. But he has flown up the boards to top five on Rivals now. And it's because of his versatility on the defensive end. You know, he's not really going to be a post defender. You can't really play him at center, but he's an awesome perimeter defender because he's got great lateral quickness. He's super long. He can jump. He's a great shot blocker. He's great on help defense. He's really can do it all on the defensive end. And then on the offensive end, he's like an absolute lob threat. Anytime there's a backdoor cut, he's a good screener. He can cut quickly. He's just You know, he's a guy that you need on your offense. He's not going to be hitting threes, but, you know, he could average 10, 12 a game maybe, just just cutting to the basket, getting alley-oops, getting offensive boards. He's a great rebounder as well. So I think that he is going to be a a lottery pick next year. I don't know where in the lottery. I would would assume maybe even a little after, you know, maybe like 10 or 12 or something, something like that. But I think he is going to be a really excellent addition to the team, and he's got a great attitude, which I appreciate as well, especially for a young guy. How's he as an offensive rebounder? He's – Better defensive rebounder, but he's an offensive rebounder as well. Like he, he'll probably be top three on the team in offensive rebounds next year. I would think. I ask that because when I look at how we could utilize him, you know, especially along that baseline, I'm if he's not, yeah, you know, because the way he'll be played, if he's not shooting, I need him. You know, we're going to need him to dive or get boards or, or other things. Um, is there anybody you would compare him to? Yeah. Oh, man. Their comparisons are really hard. Um, maybe like... Uh, Sorry to put you on the spot. Maybe like... No, 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 you're good. He he's, he sort of has some of the same um, 
things as Scotty Barnes did. You know, he's like he's like six nine, six ten. He can't really shoot it that well, but he can still score. Really good defensive player. He's not as big as as uh, Scotty, I don't think, in like his frame. Like I don't, I don't think he weighs. Yeah, as much as Scotty Barnes built. does, yeah. and that might be a bad person, but I. Scotty's like a big dude, so some of those characteristics on him, maybe. But um, really good question. I'll probably look talk because I'd like to know because I did a mock draft, which we're going to talk about later anyway. I did a player comparison every, every player, so that yeah, it's really interesting to me to try to do that. Oh, I love player comps too, man. I love love player comps. Um, no. Just to just to touch. Just to uh, wrap up here, because, this, again, this is just part one. Just checking in on Texas basketball right now, checking the temperature. Um, some of the pictures you guys saw up there, you know, guys like Brock Cunningham, you know, about my offensive rebound question and guys that can help out. I do think that the strength of this team will be their experience and being a lot more comfortable playing with each other. I think they'll ha- have a lot better idea of defined roles offensively. And I think they're going to be another – top five phenomenal defensive unit. What I'm looking to see is if we're not going to have elite size and we can't, we we don't have a bunch of catch and shoot guys. um, I'd like to see us get up and down and and, and have guys like Arterio Morris and and Dylan Mitchell, Tyrese Hunter, who who can, all these guys are explosive, um, leverage their speed in the open court. I, I, I think combination of that and trying to find that balance with Chris Beard would 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 have me pleased for year two along with your with your uh uh statement about Texas yeah. to make at least you know sweet 16. Yeah I think that that's that's totally um I think fair expectation for how this team does uh, especially you know such a huge deal for the culture that Carr and Timmy Allen and Bishop came back and Cunningham. You know, it's it's a statement to, we think we can build something here. We're not done. We don't think we accomplished all that we can accomplish. And, you know, let's give it, let's run it back. And I, I like that. I think that's really good for Chris Beard because I, I was worried for the team's sake after the Jalen Tyson transfer. I was like, I hope this doesn't happen to a bunch of our guys. Like if it's too hard for them or whatever. Um, but Trey Mitchell left, but he's from Pittsburgh, so he's going to West Virginia. So he's, I think he's a lot closer to home there. So it makes sense to me. But um, yeah, we'll, I get, mean, we'll get to see him. I think they did really <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it'll be yeah. Inter in conference transfers blow my mind sometimes. I mean, McCuller went to Kansas too, you know. Um, but yeah, I think Sweet Sixteen is a fair expectation, maybe better. Well, Keenan, thank you for coming on. You guys, please follow Keenan Womack. Orange Bloods does a phenomenal job covering the team. Um, and we will be back for part two. We're actually going to have a little bit more, just a little open NBA conversation uh, and, and NBA mock draft talk. Uh, very, very fascinating NBA draft that just occurred. And um yeah, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you to the sponsor, BUSR, BUSR.com slash fanatic. Official sponsor, uh, official sponsor, official sportsbook, official betting partner of Fanatic Perspective. Appreciate you guys. Orange always up.